Hello. Today's poem we're considering is How Do I Love Thee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Before we start, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, it would be greatly appreciated if you would. Thank you so much. I have the poem here, so let's start. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smile, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. How do I love thee is Elizabeth Barrett Browning's most famous poem in which the speaker is so blissfully happy and content that she compares it to a spiritual experience. There's plenty to unpack in this poem, so let's start. Although the poem is traditionally interpreted as a love sonnet by Barrett Browning to her husband, the identity or sex of the lovers is never identified, creating a universal quality applicable to all lovers. Her depiction of an eternal and all-powerful encompassing love is something that most people can relate to. Written in the first person voice makes the poem deeply personal and confessional. Iambic pentameter makes it conversational because this rhythm, achieved by 10 syllables per line, closely mimics natural speech. The conversational style is enhanced through enjambment, run on lines. For example, I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being and ideal grace. Iambic pentameter is particularly effective on line nine with the stress on passion. I love thee with the passion put to use. Anaphora the repetition of I love thee at the start of six of the poem's lines stresses the speaker's devotion to her lover. Regarding the poem structure, using the sonnet's form is not the only way Elizabeth Barrett Browning structures her poem. From its start, she states love is measurable, let me count the ways and proceeds to offer seven ways she loves her partner. Lines five and six suggest she is not naive and hopelessly devoted to the cult of love and acknowledges love exists in the mutual bonds of daily care for the other. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candle light. By focusing on the virtues of purity and self-sacrifice, she suggests love can be measured simply in the degree of care one gives the other person. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. My soul can reach introduces a religious theme. At first, it seems as if her love for this person on earth might be as powerful as her love for God. Yet, while she acknowledges the strength of her romantic feelings later in the poem, she hopes 
both she and her lover will eventually transcend their earthly lives. She hopes they will enter heaven together, where their love, with God's help, will transcend death and develop more deeply. In line 4, she states her love helps her feel the ends of being and ideal grace. Here, the ends connotes the goals of existence, which is her attaining ideal grace. For the speaker, grace is a gift from God, and romantic love is closely linked and indistinguishable from her love for God. In line 10, the speaker writes, she loves her beloved with her childhood's faith she seemed to lose with her lost saints. Childhood faith is a reference to a child's unconditional love for somebody close to them that is often lost on attaining adulthood. However, the speaker's love for her beloved has restored her innocence and she loves him unconditionally. The reference to lost saints initially makes us conclude she no longer believes in organised religion. But in line 13 she writes, if God choose, which confirms her spirituality. Lost saints may represent people in her younger days she looked up to, revered and respected, but later found false and superficial. This is likely a veiled criticism of her overbearing father, but more of that later. Line 11 confirms that romantic love has restored her faith in people. In line 13, the speaker imagines devoting all her breath, smiles and tears to her lover. Hyperbole makes her declaration powerful. Her devotion will continue after death and her romantic love is not a trade-off between her love for her lover and her love for God. Rather, both enhance the other because her love for her lover is equivalent to a religious experience. Throughout the poem, the speaker describes her love as a free choice based upon her admiration for her lover. I love thee freely. Biographically, this is significant because Elizabeth Barrett Browning had little free will in her life until her forties. Until then, she was under the power of a controlling and restrictive father and had little choice to do anything freely. Her reference to old griefs in line 10 is likely an allusion to the miserable time spent under her father's control. However, there is a happy ending. In the end, she exercised her free will, marrying her lover in secret and eloping. Given the poet's experience, it's not surprising that the poem elevates choice and freedom as romantic values. By comparing her love to an effort to strive for rights, she connects romantic love to a broader set of ethical values and goals, including the freedom to choose one's destiny and the freedom for a woman to choose their husbands and marry for love, not wealth. In line one, let me count the ways is an imperative that firmly places the woman in control of the narrative. She answers the rhetorical question she sets by declaring, let me count the ways with the stress on me. Let me count the ways. This rhetorical question, here an aporia, a rhetorical question that expresses uncertainty or doubt, is the springboard for the speaker's reflection on love and creates a powerful opening. Her use of the pronoun thee 
An archaic second person pronoun, meaning you, positions the poem as an apostrophe, a direct address to an absent person or an object. Using the complements the poem's formal structure. The sonnet form is typically associated with love poetry. Writing in a formal style demonstrates the importance of her meditation on love. It acknowledges her love for her lover by choosing a challenging poetic form to express her devotion to him. The poem champions an important theme, that love is best demonstrated through action, in attending to the relationship from sun to candlelight, rather than in praise, which is only words after all. Actions speak louder than words. The poet prefers to love with a passion put to use. The best way she can use her talent is not merely through the poem's words, but in the challenge of structuring a beautiful sonnet dedicated to her lover. This idea of demonstrating love through action is presented early in the poem in line two. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height. And level in line five. The poet uses these words to create a three-dimensional framing of her love as she examines its depth, breadth and height. She suggests love is something constructed and capable of building and developing. Elizabeth Barrett Browning's metaphor based on measurement, science and architecture creates something concrete, capable of examination and contrasts with flowery poetic notions that love is purely an emotion. Elizabeth Barrett Browning is arguing that love is work, often hard work, if the relationship is to be maintained and grow. Hyperbole emphasises her love is all-encompassing. She loves her husband to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. Although the poem begins by declaring it is possible to count the way one loves, by its end, with her reference to an afterlife, she implies that love need not be measurable again because it will be infinite and unbounded. After all, space and time will no longer apply. Referring to soul in line three shows her attraction for her lover is spiritual too. In other words, her partner is also her soulmate. Hyperbole is used in lines five and six. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. The harmony and grace love brings is mirrored in clear, precise rhymes. For example, height and sight. A feeling of harmony is created in the use of assonance and consonance. Consonance appears in the phrase depth and breadth, while assonance appears in the repeated vowel sounds feeling, being and ideal. Also in freely and purely. These melodious effects, pleasant sounds, when spoken, reflect the speaker's state of bliss. The poem suggests love transcends death and the afterlife will augment, improve the couple's love because earthly love will be coupled with God's spiritual heavenly love. The Caesura in line 13 emphasizes the break with life and the start of the afterlife. Smiles, tears of all my life and if God choose, how do I love thee differs from a traditional English sonnet, which usually contains three sections of four lines called quatrains, followed by a final two line couplet. The English sonnet usually contains a turning point or a volta 
in Shakespeare's poems found usually in line 9. However, Elizabeth Barrett Browning's sonnet resembles the Petrarchan form, the Italian prototype which inspired Sir Thomas Wyatt and was adapted by Shakespeare, Milton and other English writers. Barrett Browning's poem follows a Petrarchan rhyming octave followed by a rhyming sestet and ABA, ABA, CDC, DCD rhyme scheme. The poet's formal style enhances the declaration of love for him. By octave, I mean the poem's first eight lines and by sestet, I mean its remaining six lines. Although this is a poem everybody can relate to, it does firmly ground itself in the epic love story between Elizabeth Barrett Browning and Robert Browning. Both did not shy away from the power of passion. Poetry brought them together, especially their admiration for each other's work. Robert Browning wrote to her, I love your verses with all my heart, dear Miss Barrett. And many years later, they married. Together, at last, they influenced each other's poetry. How Do I Love Thee first appeared as Sonnet 43 in Elizabeth Barrett Browning's collection, Sonnets from the Portuguese, 1850. Why Portuguese? Because it was Robert Browning's affectionate name for her. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If so, please hit the like button below. Also check out our other videos on writing and textual analysis, including our video on Robert Browning's poem, Meeting at Night. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, it would be greatly appreciated if you would. Thank you so much. Until next time, from Carol and me, write well.